This set of slides is about the financial sector. We are going to do the following. We'll explain the functions of money and how M1, M2 and M3 money aggregates relate to these functions. We'll explain the velocity of money and the equation of exchange. We'll explain the components of the financial system in South Africa and we'll explain interest rates and the South African Reserve Banks and how banks create money. So this specific presentation is about the functions of money and how M1, M2 and M3 relate to these functions. So the functions of money. To be classified as money, something needs to be able to fulfill all of the following three functions. It must be a medium of, medium of exchange that is generally accepted, it must be a store of value and then it's also a unit of account. So notes and coins can be regarded as money because it fulfills all those functions. If you look at a credit card, it can be used as a medium of exchange. It is generally accepted, but it's not a store of value because there's not money, it is, it's a permission to use an overdraft. So it's not a store of value. Therefore, it's not money. If you look at a debit card, a debit card is a medium of exchange. It is generally accepted as payment. Is it a store of value? Yes because there can be a balance in a debit card. So therefore, we can regard it as money. If we look at cigarettes, now in some societies, for example, in a jail society, cigarettes may be accepted as a medium of exchange, but it is not something that is generally accepted by us all. So therefore, we cannot say that cigarettes can be regarded as money. If we look at cattle, so in some societies, cattle can also be used as a medium of exchange. It can be regarded as a store of value because you can sell it in the future. However, it is not generally accepted. Not everyone will be able to accept cattle as payment, especially for small things that you want to buy. It will be difficult to divide the cattle. So cattle is not a type of money. So you can see that we mainly look at the first two functions when we consider whether something can be regarded as money. So in South Africa, the following is regarded to be money and we use the symbol M to denote money. Cash, which includes notes and coins in circulation outside the banking sector and we use the symbol C to denote that. And demand deposits, for which we use the symbol D. So we can say that money is equal to cash plus demand deposits. So cash is money that can be used for transaction, but no interest is earned on it. With demand deposits is money that can be withdrawn immediately and then be used for transactions. And also no interest or very little interest is earned on it. So Cash plus demand deposits added together gives us M1 money in South Africa. So M1 money mainly complies with the medium of exchange function of money because it is available for transactions. It does not comply with the store of value function because no interest is earned on it to preserve the value, especially during times of inflation. But interest can be earned on short and medium term deposits and on long term deposits. So short and medium term deposits are deposits up to six months. They can be transferred into cash in a few days. So you keep them with a bank, but you can give the bank notice to transfer it into cash and you will lose relative little interest. And then it can be used as a medium of exchange. It can also preserve value to a certain extent as some interest will be earned on it. If we look at longer term deposits, deposits longer than six months, these take longer to be transferred into cash and therefore it will take a while longer before it can be used as a medium of exchange. But it does preserve value as interest is earned on it. 
So if we now look at M1, which is equal to cash and demand deposits, and then we want to see how to calculate M2. M2 is equal to M1, so it includes both cash and demand deposits, but we add short and medium term deposits to calculate M2. And then M3 is equal to everything that's included in M2. So cash plus the more deposits plus short and medium term deposits plus long term deposits. So if we look at the functions of money, we can say that M1 maybe complies with the medium of exchange function. While M2 complies with both the medium of exchange function and the store of value function. And the same applies to a larger extent even to M3 because it is a stronger store of value. So our conclusion is that M1 money mainly complies with the medium of exchange function of money while M2 and M3 complies with the store of value function of money as well. So let's quickly see how to calculate M1, M2, M3. So we are given the cash, the more deposits, short and medium term deposits and long term deposits. We want to calculate M1. We know M1 is equal to cash, which is 120,000, plus the more deposits, which is equal to 10 million. So 120,000 plus 10 million, M1 is 10 million 120,000 rand. Now we want to calculate M2, that is equal to M1, so we're going to use that M1 plus short and medium term deposit, 8 million. So it's M1, 10 million, 120,000 rand, plus 8 million short and medium term deposit, so M2 is equal to 18 million, 120,000 rand. If we want to calculate M3, we take M2, which is 18,120,000, we add long-term deposit, which we can see in the table is 4 million. So 18,120,000 rand plus 4 million gives us 22,120,000 rand for M3. So in this presentation, we consider the functions of money. We explained M2, M1, M2 and M3 and how these relate to the functions of money. And then we explained how to calculate M1, M2 and M3.